Okay, so I've got the code um, API through the serial. So this is just sending five volts in ground and TXRX, it's a 3.3 volt, you know, direct between the two ESP32s. And um, the cursor AI created a simple API to send the data between the two devices. Um, right now I don't actually have the battery plugged in, so this is old data. And I will make it, you know, not show stale data eventually. This is what it does by default, the Batman library. Or at least how I'm interpreting it. I, it might not be that. But um, you can turn on and off balancing. See there, it turns off. It takes a little while for it to update here because the the command gets sent right away and then it gets read back. Um, not that quickly. Mainly just to not overload the serial interfaces there. It turned off the balance flag. You can turn it back on. And now it shows which cells it thinks it's balancing based on the previous data. I will have to, yeah, make it not, you know, work on stale data. But, um, yeah, and it's got these couple pages. I still want to reorganize these. This is this is all created by the AI. Um, Claude 4, mostly, for through uh, the cursor. It's an IDE. It's a fork of VS Code that has the AI... Uh, you know, thinking generative AIs in there. That's not the right word, but whatever. Um, yeah, and it's amazing stuff. It'll create the code, and then if there's an error, you just tell it, like, oh, yeah, this part isn't perfect. Like, all the, just all these little, te like, LCD locations, all this stuff automatically created in seconds versus, you know, me trial and erroring to create this kind of graph would take me ages and it does the math too to scale it like because i'm stopping at 2.6 volts i don't care about anything below that so it just cuts that off you know and if it, it did make a couple mistakes and i'm like yeah the 3.4 isn't lining up with the 3.4 i'm like and then it checks its own code and sees the issue and but yeah overall it it creates amazing stuff um very easily I mean, obviously you need a lot of checking after the fact to uh, make sure it works. Yeah, that's where we are right now. I still need a shunt to be able to test the shunt interface. And I need a way to charge these, which is up to about 60 volts. I need a small current limited 60 volt source, which I don't have right here i can make one or something yeah i guess i could put this these two channels in series if i wanted to and power this thing with a normal 12 volt I mean, that other stuff's just for the shunt so i could power it all with the 12 volt i could actually just put it all on that one 12 volt rail i think they'll, they all could handle being on one common rail it's mainly just for noise it has these two rails here i think so yeah, see you later.